So, hi, we're your Thunder Geeks. We have a fantastic guest this evening. Uh, it is a first for Thunder Geeks. Yeah, we've had uh, actors, directors, cosplayers, musicians, but never a political leader. And we have a very special political leader. His Excellency... President Kevin Ba of the Republic of Malaysia. That is a mouthful, but welcome, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for uh, for having us. For our listeners who are unfamiliar with Malaysia and a micronation, could you give us just a bit of an explanation? Sure, absolutely. Well, Malaysia, as mentioned, is a micronation. Uh, it is a tiny self-declared country located within the United States. Malaysia was originally founded on 26 May of 1977. Back then it was called the Grand Republic of Boldstein, and I was prime minister. My friend James was the king, and uh, James moved on to other projects, and in 1998 I obtained property here uh, in northern Nevada, to, uh, changed the name to the Republic of Malaysia, and we've been going strong ever since. How did you settle upon the laws for Malaysia, such as the no drumming in a bathroom? <laughs> okay, we have a large number of of what may seem like really weird laws. For example, no drumming in the bathroom. Normally, the chief constable is in charge of the laws, but she's not present right now. So no setting off a nuclear device within the nation or else you get a 500 Ballora fine, something like that. <laughs> anyway, most of, these, uh, most of these laws were actually adapted from weird ones over the border in the United States. For example, the aforementioned law uh, of setting off nuclear devices is actually a law in the books in Salinas, California. You set off an <laughs> atom bomb there, you get a large fine. I don't know who's going to levy that fine after you set that bomb off, but well, whatever. So we just, you know, we like to do things a little bit differently here in Malasia. I like to be unusual. And uh, so we adopted those and, and to uh, sort of fit our own culture, too. What are some of the other government leadership positions in Malasia? Uh, besides myself as the president, the first lady is my vice president and designated successor, and she is here with me right now. Say hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, lady. <laughs> we also have the chief constable who's in charge of our uh, law enforcement here uh, in Malasia, and uh, that is really it. Most of the government positions and jo jobs and so forth uh, in our country are handled by, by myself or uh, by the first lady. Malasia is a dictatorship, so it's kind of not unusual for dictatorships to uh, – basically have all government jobs under one person who runs it all. <laughs> so we understand that Malasi has the cookie dough standard instead of the gold standard. Absolutely. What we're really curious about is do different cookie doughs have different values? And if so, what are the more valuable and least valuable? You know, sometimes I get questions that have never been asked before, and that would be one right there. Actually, well, we prefer Pillsbury, but we'll take just about anything because we receive just about anything. When people come visit and visit our country, they bring us cookie dough yeah, all the time. But it's almost always chocolate chip. Chocolate chip is definitely the, the standard. Yes. Yeah. yeah so if you bring in sugar cookie dough, I don't know what we do. Well, we got it. <laughs> yeah. we, we, got some, we got some sugar cookie dough when Jack Black visited oh, the yes. actor Jack Black because okay. uh, he and his entourage showed up with – uh, probably about 10 different tubes of cookie That's dough. True. So <laughs> we had a wide variety there. <laughs> Just keep it in. So would rainbow chip be worth more than chocolate chip? I don't think oh. I've ever had rainbow chip, but it sounds pretty sounds delicious. delicious. Yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we might have to make a special, you know. Yeah, send it on over to us. We'll give it a try. Yeah, we'll, we'll size it up. <laughs> oh, now now when I visit Malasia, I'm going to have to bring rainbow chip. Absolutely. Yes, we fully encourage that. Now, are there any special instructions for tourists of Malasia? Well, no, not particularly. Uh, as mentioned, the chief constable has has a wide variety of, of uh, laws and so forth that she'll, uh, she'll hit you with when, when visitors first uh, – enter the country and of course we do uh, stamp passports and there's a few things you can't bring into the country like catfish and walruses and so forth like that so you have to check your pockets for that and uh, uh other than that wear sensible shoes and I mean, sunscreen to, yeah and sunscreen when you're coming to visit our dis distant desert nation mm -hmm. <laughs> why are walrus and catfish banned in Malaysia? Well, i'm glad you asked that question i just happen to have an answer by the way i have an answer for everything because well, it's my country. If I don't know it, I can make it up. But anyway, <laughs> uh, back in the, well, back a few years ago, uh, Malasia was going to be featured in an article in FHM magazine, which was kind of a version of Maxim uh, magazine. And oh. instead, they bumped our article in favor of an article about guys that catch catfish with their hands. Uh, it's called, <laughs> it's called, yes, it's called noodling, and it's something people really do. I don't know why. Yeah, at any rate, so having done that, we banned, uh, we banned catfish. Of course, it's really easy to ban something that you don't actually have anywhere in your country, since we literally have, like, no standing water in our, in our nation. <laughs> it makes law enforcement a lot easier when you ban something that you don't really have in the country. 
<laughs> How did the conflict arise with Mustachistan? Yes. Help a friend of mine start his own nation, uh, Mustachistan, and uh, in the process of him growing his nation, uh, he basically claimed most of the state of Nevada, which included Malasi, and that caused some some friction back and forth. Oh. And so uh, eventually uh, we had to go to war to uh, uh, defeat him, which was sort of pre-established anyway. And, and uh, he wasn't that motivated. And so that's how that <laughs> really went. And, of course, uh, it's important to mention that, that Malasi has been involved in like two or three wars, and they're all essentially political satire uh, because we're a tiny country and you can't really go to war with another micronation. They're not usually you know, near enough to you for that sort of thing, which is probably a good thing. Poke fun, if you will. Uh, at the idea of wars and why people go to war and so forth like that. We understand you're at war with East Germany as well. Yes, perpetual war with that nation. <laughs> I'm sure some of our listeners are surprised to hear uh, specifically East Germany uh, after the unification of Germany. Why East Germany? Back in uh, 1983, I was still I was prime minister of uh, Malasia when it was still called the Grand Republic of Volstein, and I was stationed in then West Germany and uh, with the United States Army and. Uh, as armies tend to do, we had to get up every now and again in the middle of the night and jump in our tanks and go to our forward staging positions in case the, uh, you know, the communist hordes should come, you know, charging across the border there. Well, in my uh, position as prime minister of the country, uh, I was woken up one too many times in late 83, and so I decided to declare war on the nearest East Bloc nation, which was East Germany, and then forgot all about it till about, I think, about 10 years ago now. I was going through the uh, records in the Ministry of the, of the Closet, and uh, pulled this uh, war declaration out, and I was like, oh, that's really cute, war declaration, East Germany is long gone, until I did some research and discovered that, in fact, East Germany is not long gone, even though uh, you think it might be. Back in 1973, Fidel Castro of Cuba gave a tiny island off the coast of Cuba to the nation of East Germany. It essentially became East German territory, more or less, and when the unification happened in 90 or 91, something like that, that wasn't addressed in the uh, unification treaty. And so that remains the only outstanding piece of East Germany still left. It's an uninhabited island off the coast of Cuba. Nothing but marine iguanas there. And so <laughs> because there are no humans, there's no one with whom to arrange peace. And so our war with East Germany will probably go on forever. Well, I, th I think there's grave concern uh, with uh, communist iguanas because they blend in well. They do. They yeah. do. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. There've been a, yeah, there's been some concern about that here. So we keep an eye out for, for any iguanas that might be roaming through. You, never, you just never know. Yeah. It always pays to be vigilant. Speaking of the first two wars, with the third war with the nostalgia critic, uh, yes, I'm curious, uh, have you changed your defensive strategies since then, or is a machine gun still the best defense? <laughs> that did work out pretty well. <laughs> That was a lot of fun when those those guys showed up. I, if you can say a war is fun, that was a lot of fun when those guys show up. They up. They the big, biggest, they, you know, they, to make they wanted to make the movie, and it was the biggest bunch of nerds you ever saw in your life. I mean, they, fantastic! It was fantastic. It, it really was. They were a joy to have around. They, they really were. It's like it's like what two or three van loads of these guys roll up the, you know. First thing they said when they jumped out of the car, Pikachu. Yeah. They were like, welcome. <laughs> You may enter. Yeah, you may enter. Yes, indeed. You may invade us. Yeah. <laughs> of course, so we uh, respect and admire the dictatorship within Malasia. Do you have any dictators that you look up to for inspiration as well? Well, I mean, good question. That's a great. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun to draw from. Uh, I guess. Uh, you know, I guess minus we, the mass killings. What do you yeah, got? yeah, minus the mass killings and the you know various political repressions and so forth like that. They're, they're probably pretty awesome guys, and so uh, you know, there's there's a lot, and they're definitely almost all snappy dressers. I mean, <laughs> any any dictator who's not a snappy dresser, he's not doing it right. That, As I understand, uh, Kim Jong Un is a fantastic mountain driver. He might be wonderful, but look at that outfit he wears. I mean, what oh, the, yes. what, what the, what, you know, and that zip up jacket his dad wore. What the heck was that all about? Get, get some bling. Yeah, get some bling. I mean, all of his generals have, like, fantastic medals and cool hats. What, what's he doing? So, come on. He's got to step up. It's just not, not really making it. Nobody in particular, but I definitely draw some inspiration for some things, you know, as in, in ruling this nation. Without, again, all the repression and mass killing. Well, well speaking of style, where would one purchase their own dictator uniform? I'm telling you, eBay is the bomb. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, dictators are us. Everybody knows that. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Military supply stores. Military supply stores, uh, eBay, 
their stores. I, you know, it's, it, we're a third world country. We, you know, we, we try to go cheap as, as much as we possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> Since you've been at war so much, do you have any like special commendations or medals for, uh, <laughs> absolutely myself. I've got about 25 pounds of medals, but, uh, <laughs> 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 yes, yes. I'm sure there's a medal. Yes, we do have medals. We have medals for everything that we do here in Malasia because it's kind of, you know, what you do in dictatorships, pass out medals is, you know, it, it beats actually feeding your people. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yes, well, I mean, we do have a, we had a medal from the Mustachistan War, and we have an East German medal, and uh, we pass out a couple of those. Of course, that war goes on forever, so it's generally customary to pass out medals when the war's over. So I'm saving a lot of money by not doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever that war ends, wink, wink. I'll be sure and pass out medals. We do so, hand out medals for other reasons, though. Yes, absolutely. When we get together oh, oh. at Micronations, it's sort of customary to, to uh, I guess, pass out medals to uh, the other micronational leaders and so forth. And that happened when we uh, get together at Microcon uh, every couple of years. And I think we passed out uh, the Order of the Palm or something like that last last yeah. time. So speaking of Microcon, yes. um, besides the great Republic of Malasia, what other countries do you know will be attending and – do you have any rivalries with any of the other nations? We'll start at the end and work our way back. Uh, no, we don't really have any rivalries. The amount of times a day somebody wants to declare war on us is just fantastic. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it's phenomenal. You know, really every twelve-year-old that, that thinks it's a good idea to make his own flag wants to all of a sudden. How do I make my own? How do I make, make my own country? Thank you for the info. Now we want to declare war on you. Yep. Oh, almost, well, thanks, Johnny. Yes, that's almost exactly what happens. It really is. So much so that I actually have a canned reply in my notes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks for declaring war on us. It's been wonderful talking to you. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Um, if you get your allowance together, I'll see you at microphone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, definitely some, some uh, uh, I don't know what the phrase is, diehards, some regulars <laughs> at micro that, we'll, that we will be seeing again at Microcon in 2019. Uh, for example, the uh, Grand Duchy of West Arctica will most certainly be there. The hosts are Slobovians. That's the kingdom of Slobovia, which is uh, in Toronto itself. And uh, we'll have uh, the Kingdom of Ruritania will be visiting there. Of course, the micronational world is constantly in a state of flux. So anybody that I might say today might not be there tomorrow. <laughs> Just yeah. never, never know. Those guys will certainly be around. They've been around for a while. And it's always a good time. It's wonderful to get together at Microcon, even the newer micronations, and, and to take, get their take on what it means to have one's own country. There's a lot of different ideas, and it's just absolutely amazing, the imagination and creativity uh, that, that goes into. I mean, we have a fairly standard country model here in Malasia with borders and flags and money and all that kind of stuff. But uh, others don't necessarily subscribe to that standard model of what a country is. Um, my favorite to, to always point to is... Uh, yeah, ambulatory. Yeah, ambulatory states of obsidia. Uh, their entire nation is a rock that they carry around <laughs> in their box. It's about maybe maybe six inches, eight inches across. And so they can actually point to the highest point in their entire country. It's the top of the rock. <laughs> 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 and it's uh, fantastic, but also their point is that this rock is symbolic that, that, that there really don't need to be borders. Nations are just gatherings of people that are basically doing the same thing, you, you know, sort of living, you know, living their lives and doing whatever they do. That's just their approach, and it's it's just fun to you know, kind of get reading on whatever, whatever somebody else thinks about you know, what, what a nation is. Now, I'm curious, have you guys created any uh, national holidays for Malasia? Oh, goodness gracious. We have like 25 or 30 holidays. The more the better. <laughs> yeah, the more the better. Yeah, absolutely. We love to eat. So, you know, anytime we can throw in a holiday that involves food, we're definitely down with that. Yeah, absolutely. We have many, many holidays. So, for example, this month we, we have, of course, standard Christmas and Boxing Day. Uh, we also have, uh, of course, you know, Halloween, but we also have our own uh, holidays. We have Space Day where we, where we launch rockets. We have Chocolate Mint Day where we have chocolate mint ice cream. That's uh, that's my thing. We have Boulder Day where we pulled a large rock out of the ground, and now we have meatball sandwiches. Yep, absolutely. And, of course, the, well, the death day of Emperor Norton, which just celebrates uh, Emperor Norton. That's in January. That's any any number of different holidays. We're always down for something new. How did Malasia perform in the 2000 Micronation Olympics? Well, we just swept it. We, I think we had three or four golds. We do our own, uh, I guess, semi-athletic events here uh, in Malasia, uh, such as broom ball, and uh, we have the Misfit Regatta uh, every couple of years. So that's about, and we're not particularly athletic anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> you sound great, huh? <laughs> we like to eat. We're not athletes. What do you want? <laughs> well, I've been working on a few things that maybe we could do for fun, type of gaming um, stuff like that at, at Microcon. 
with the other micronational leaders where we're all there in the same room, even if it's just some kind of like a trivia showdown or something like that. <laughs> yeah, we, we were honored to uh, find out that uh, our nation of Canada in Toronto was hosting uh, MicroCon, of course, uh, July yeah. 19th to the 21st. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any advice for um, other individuals who want to form their own nation, other than, of course, never declaring war in Malaysia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just save your effort on that one. Yeah, there's a, a couple different things I like to throw in. Um, you know, imagination and creativity. Something a little bit different than, uh, than well, I guess, what's going on outside your, your, you know, your self-declared nation. Uh, study up on a little bit of, of history and geography and, know, and uh, try to understand how nations work how governments work, what other cultures are like, and then just sort of build from there and see what you can do with the, just the general idea of having one's own nation. That's what we do here, uh, you know, with Malasia. Because really, when you're starting your own nation, really the sky's the limit. But you're starting from scratch when you say, wake up one day and say, hey, you know, I want to start my own country. Now, what's my flag going to look like? You know, I'm going to have a flag, of course. Well, it's wonderful if you just happen to like the color purple, but what does it mean? So you got to dig a little bit deeper in your creativity to uh, see what you can put together that gives it you know, a little more depth than I just happen to like a piece of purple hanging on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, just kind of learn a little bit about what countries are, what countries do, uh, and then just sort of build from there. Now, one thing we love to do on the show is we love to play a very simple game call, uh, called This or That. All we're going to do is give you two options. We want you to rapid fire the first one that feels right to you. Oh, wow. Okay. Are you a lover or a fighter? Oh, probably a lover. Marvel <laughs> or DC? I don't Marvel. Know. Yeah, I like DC. I'm big, I'm big Superman. Not the current Superman, okay, yeah. but Superman. You're rapid fire. You're rapid fire. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Sorry. Sorry. Go. Oh, okay, go. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Trek. Would you rather be eaten by a horde of gerbils or a flock of ducks? Oh, ducks. Tacos or pizza? Tacos. Pirates or ninjas? Pirates. Burned to death or frozen to death? I'm frozen. <laughs> Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Star Trek holodeck or Matrix headjack? Oh, the holodeck. Would you rather wipe with sandpaper or poison ivy? <laughs> I guess sandpaper. Cats or dogs? Uh, dogs. And one of our most important questions, who has the better booty? Peter Parker, Spider-Man, or Dick Grayson, Nightwing? <laughs> Peter Parker. <laughs> Go with Peter Parker. <laughs> and our final question, uh, this is one that... Tends to be uh, the most controversial. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> We've had this debate. What's your answer there, President Ball? I don't think it is. Meat between two pieces of bread. I know, I know, I know. You can go into beats <laughs> on that, but <laughs> I just don't think it is. It doesn't really have a... It's a hot dog. It's just a hot dog. It's not like a... It's not, well, maybe, but no, no. I don't think so, no. I don't think it's a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in a category of its own. <laughs> other. <laughs> other. Yeah, it's other. <laughs> but I can see some controversy there. You could probably break it down to, you know, a sandwich is usually open on all sides of the bread and the hot dogs, you know, the bun is it's not, not split all the way, but I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. You know. <laughs> Solving the world's problems one thing at a time. One hot dog at a time. That's yeah. Right. Mr. President, okay. um, First Lady, I am very, very you know, happy that you joined us here. Uh, of course, uh, our viewers, if they happen to be in the Toronto area, can find you at MicroCon July 19th to the 21st. We can have a hot dog sandwich together. Yes, we'll have hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> No, no sandwiches. It's hot dog. Other, other. Do you have any final words of wisdom for our viewers? Well, I'm not feeling particularly wise right now, but we, we definitely encourage folks to uh, start their own country. We, we think it's a fantastic uh, experience. It's been so much fun for us, and, and the fun just never, never stops. Um, and, and you could just, just do so much with the idea. So uh, we, we would say if it's not really words of wisdom, just encouragement. You know, uh, why not? Why not start your own country? See what you can do with it. Have fun with it. Build the world one little tiny nation at a time. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. It was fantastic speaking with you, and we look forward to the great history of Malasia continuing for many decades to come. Thank you very much. It's definitely been our pleasure. Great. Go Thunder Geeks. Woo!